All right, guys, now this is gonna be a pretty important video. I wanna make sure in this video that you're well informed about RAM. So the next time you go to buy some or build a computer, you're gonna be well informed so you don't waste your money. Because a lot of times people say, oh, the most important thing is how much RAM you have or even the frequency. But there's something that a lot of people ignore which is just as important and that is the latency. Now, I wanna to explain to you how the frequency and latency relate to each other in RAM and why it's absolutely essential that you know the differences so you don't waste your money buying RAM when you could have spent a lot less and get the same performance. Now, before I explain latency, I wanna explain frequency. It's a little bit easier to understand. So what is frequency? Basically, it's the number of cycles per second, how many operations per second the RAM can do. So take 3,000 megahertz, for example. A megahertz means one million per second. So 3,000 means three billion operations per second. The higher the megahertz, the less time it takes to complete a cycle, therefore, the more stuff it can do. Pretty simple. And you can actually figure out exactly how long one of these cycles is using the simple conversion between period and frequency. So you do period equals one over the frequency, so it's one over three billion. And that means that a 3000 megahertz clock takes 0.33 nanoseconds to complete. Now there's one more caveat. The real clock rate or frequency of RAM is actually one half of the rated frequency. So if you go and buy RAM that says 3000 megahertz, the real clock rate is actually 1500. Now the reason for that is because RAM today actually processes two pieces of data per cycle. So you can kind of understand why DDR, RAM, stands for double data rate. Makes sense, it, it processes double the data. So while you're only getting 1500, the effective clock rate is 3000, that's why they rate it at 3000. Okay, now frequency is out of the way. I'm sure by now you have been thinking, all right, well, it's always better to have a higher frequency, right? Not necessarily, because the performance of the RAM is equally dependent on the CAS latency the timings of the RAM. Okay, so let's get into the latency. The CAS latency, which you might see as CL whatever number, is the number of clock cycles between when the CPU sends a request to the RAM and the RAM performs the operation. So say the CL latency is five. That means there's five clock cycles delay between when the RAM gets the request and sends it back completed. So you might already be starting to see how the frequency comes into play here. Because the latency is the delay in number of clock cycles, the shorter the clock cycle, which means higher frequency, the shorter the delay. So, if you have a higher frequency, the delay is going to be shorter, even if the latency number is the same. All right, so hold on. We're gonna do an example so you can understand this better. Let's say we have RAM where the real clock rate is 1000 megahertz. That means that the clock period is one nanosecond. Now, in this RAM, the CAS latency is 10. That means 10 clock cycles, which means that the response time of the RAM is 10 nanoseconds. You just do one nanosecond times 10 clock cycles, 10 nanoseconds. That is basically the effective response time, and this is what we're gonna use to rate the performance of the RAM. Now let's take RAM that is double the frequency. That's 2,000 megahertz. You might think that's gonna be better, right? Well, in this case, let's make the CAS latency 20. So it's double the megahertz, but it's also double the latency. So if you do 2000 megahertz, that's 0.5 nanoseconds per clock cycle. So it does have a shorter clock cycle. However, the latency is 20. So you multiply those together, you get 10 again as the response time, 10 nanoseconds. So in this case, both sets of RAM are gonna have the same performance. Now you can see how it's just as important to know the latency of your RAM when you're going to buy it as the frequency. RAM manufacturers love to boast high frequency, but that's only half the story. Now hopefully you can understand why knowing the frequency or latency is meaningless without knowing the other half. You could have a really high frequency RAM but a really high latency, or a low frequency RAM with a low latency, and they might perform the same. And in general, the high frequency RAMs are going to be more expensive because people associate higher frequency with better performance, even though you might be able to get the same performance out of a lower frequency, lower latency RAM. And I know what you're thinking, you're saying, Joe, I don't wanna do this calculation every time to figure out which RAM is better. 
I got you on that one. Here's a table right on the screen that's going to compare the frequency at the top, the latency down the side, and this is going to show you the response time. You can just look it up right here without having to do the calculation. And I love you guys so much. I'm going to put this Excel spreadsheet right in the description. All the formulas are already pre-entered. You can even extend it out if you want. And the yellow is actually I've, I went through and highlighted based on Newegg availability. This is the higher, highest performance RAM available that exists per frequency. So obviously you might think, oh, well, I'm just going to get the, a one latency for a 3000 megahertz. That, that doesn't exist because as you get shorter clock cycles, it's harder to get a lower latency. So the yellow is basically the best performance for DDR4 memory in existence at the moment. So that might change in the future as DDR4 becomes more ready, readily available. We're probably going to see higher performance RAM coming out. But this way you guys can just look it up. You're going to have this handy table. Next time you're going to buy RAM, you can easily figure out what is the best. So if you want to know the formula I use, that's simply you first convert the real clock rate, which is half the rate of clock rate, into the period. So if it's 1000 megahertz, that's 1 divided by 1000 times a million, because it's megahertz. And then you multiply that by the latency, and that gets you the response time. Okay, that's it. I know this got really technical, but hopefully you guys were able to understand at least that you want the lowest timing at the highest frequency. That's pretty much the long-winded version of saying that. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If there's something I totally missed, I'll put it in the description. And you can also download that table, that Excel spreadsheet I mentioned in the description as well. Again, don't forget to like the video, share this with your friends if they're trying to buy a computer or build a computer so they understand that there's more to RAM than just the number of gigabytes you buy. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I try to make new videos as often as I can. If you guys have any specific requests of videos, then you can let me know and I'll try to accommodate you. So that is it. Thank you guys for watching and sticking around. I will see you next time. Have a good one.